A research question is a fundamental part of the research process, but it also is a very technical thing. A research question is not just any question you'd like to research. A research question has to be properly formatted so that you'll be able to really get to the thing you want to talk about. So it's important to think about the difference between a research question and the kind of broader set of questions that a research work is asking about. So the research question is the specific question you are asking and answering in your study. When you are raising a research question, you are trying to get a very specific answer. You are not trying to explain everything in the world. You are not trying to build a theory of everything. Your research question probably is going to have parts, right? You're going to want to know how your research question connects to, um, how one part of it connects to another part, things like that. You also present it differently when you're presenting it in a proposal before you've done the research, whether you're a graduate student asking uh, for approval of your research or whether you're a researcher looking for grant funding or something like that. It's different how you present it like that than how you present it when you're publishing, right? But you still kind of need to specify what your question is in both circumstances. Um, and then the other thing is we have this bigger set of questions. So let's say I want to talk about the Ottawa municipal elections, right? Well, I could choose to talk about the Ottawa municipal elections as a way of talking about uh, urban politics in Canada. Or I could talk about the Ottawa municipal elections as a way of talking about um, voting structures. Or I could use it as a way of talking about um, racial and gender representation in the uh, in election systems, right? Or um, what is the work of how do nonpartisan elections work? Like there are lots of bigger sets of questions, and so when you're reading a piece of research, the researcher will usually either start with, "I have big questions about something in politics." And my research question is the very specific thing I'm actually looking at in this study. Or they'll start by saying, my research question is this specific question and it has implications for this much broader set of questions, right? So look for that so you can see how it's actually connected. Um, and so Ian Shapiro gives us a really helpful way of thinking about how research questions should be developed. I mean, he calls them research problems, not questions. But... He gives us three ways of thinking about it. The first is theory-driven, right? A theory-driven question is where you really want to show how a theory about the world works, and you're just going to go pick a thing in the world that will enable you to study it, right? Your research question comes from the fact that you want to talk about this theory, or you want to kind of look at relationships related to this theory. Methods-driven work is saying, look, I know how to do a particular kind of research really well. What kind of research can I do that will uh, work for that, right? What kind of questions can I ask using that research? Um, this might be the, if all you've got a hammer is, is a hammer, you have to go looking for nails kind of situation. Right? And the last thing is problem-driven, which is... Essentially, that you're focused on answering a particular empirical question or solving a particular problem in the world. And when you're doing problem-driven research, what you're focused on really is, is that question, right? Um, Shapiro makes an argument that problem-driven research produces the most, the most interesting research. Um, some of that has to do with kind of the historical moment he's writing in. But I think it's useful thinking when you're approaching a research question, um, you know, is it theory that's driving you? Is it method that's driving you? Or is it the problem itself that's driving you? And then how do you make sure that your project stays interesting and compelling, regardless of how you originally came to it? Um, there is, it's difficult to kind of develop a research question because, I'm sorry, that was my cat. Um, a research question can't just be any question, right? So the first thing a research question do, has to do is find a hook in your field, 
right? That means that if you want to write about um, something nobody's ever written about before in the field of political science, you have to be able to convince people that it's political science, right? Um, if you wanted to write about uh, what people's social media icons say about their politics, then you have to be able to explain how that relates to other ideas political scientists have had, right? A theory also needs to be researchable, right? You can't ask a question that it's impossible to get an answer to. You have to actually be able to get information to help you answer the question. If you don't, then you're kind of going to end up screwed, right? Um, you have to be able to connect it to the literature, right? Which means you have to think about what other researchers have done and said and used that. Um, if nobody's ever written on the thing before, okay, that might be exciting, but somebody's written on something related somewhere, right? It needs to be su sufficiently specific that it can delineate what you're doing and what you're not doing. This is the, uh, the vase metaphor that they use uh, in one of a textbook I used to use, and so I, I've borrowed their vase metaphor. You need a broad question or topic related to politics. PIR is politics and international relations. You need a skinny middle part of the vase that you can get your hand around, right? Which is researchable. If the, the researchable part is too big, you can't actually do the project. But the big bottom of the vase also needs to be large because that's how the conclusions illuminate, illuminate the broad question, right? And the final thing is your research question has to not be boring. And obviously what is boring is highly, highly subjective. But the point is that you as a researcher cannot find it boring and you have to be able to convince enough other people not to find it boring, right? If you are the only person on earth who will find this material interesting, then you either need to convince people they're wrong or you need to somehow, you know, uh, find a better question, right? So generally, we can sort research questions into five categories, right? They're descriptive, explanatory, predictive, prescriptive, and normative, right? A descriptive question is the characteristics of something, right? If I'm wanting to talk about, you know, uh, my office, a research question of what's my office like, right? Well, then I would describe its size. I would describe um, its shape. I would describe how the doors work. If I'm thinking socially, then I would think about, like, what are the practices that go on in it, right? I'm just describing the thing. And this can be tremendously useful because if you don't have a good description of the thing, you can't really ask any of the other questions, right? So frequently researchers, sometimes people do descriptive research because they're legitimately interested in the answer, and sometimes they do it because you need the description before you can do anything else. The next type of research is explanatory, and that's where you're trying to look at cause and effect. Um, explanatory questions are trying to explain what happens, right? Usually either what happened in the past or what generally causes something to happen. Predictive research is trying to guess what will happen based on current trends. The natural science example that I can think of most easily right now is all the work on what are the various climate implications of various uh, policies or various sets of actions, right? This is trying to predict what will happen if there's no reduction in carbon emissions, if there's this much reduction in carbon emissions, right? And you have to take a lot of variables into account in order to actually get analysis that would allow you to kind of figure out how that will work. Prescriptive is a little different than predictive. Prescriptive is not what's going to happen, but it's we want something to happen, right? Let's say we have a policy objective where we want to um, cut the tax burden on all families by 10%, and we want it to be evenly distributed, right? Well, that would require a prescriptive bit of research be conducted that would say, how do we do that within the existing tax code, right? Or let's say we say um, we want um, 
all future elections to be conducted under a circumstance that will cause our party to be elected, right? This is not a terribly ethical question, but you can imagine some government somewhere asking it. Well, then you would say, how do we get there, right? Prescriptive is, is how to get there. A normative question is what should we do, right? What is best, what is right, what ought to be done, right? It doesn't, it will make explanatory moves, it will make predictive moves, it will make descriptive moves, but fundamentally the question guiding the research is what is good, right? And it, normative questions often come tied together with other sorts of questions in that there's a normative question motivating the study, but at the same time, you need something empirical to understand it. So you try to balance those two out.